which was written in 2010 for Joel, Joel Trebig, Carolyn Trebig, and Andrew Rissinger. The title of the piece comes from the first two letters of each of their names, Joel, J-O, Carolyn, C-A, and Andrew, and J, Joe Pat. So it's not a real word. It is a trio in the true sense of the word. Each part plays an equally important role, and it's not a duet with organ and company. The piece is written in six short movements, each with its own distinct character, but also maintaining a comp compositional cohesion with both unique chromatic radically interwoven into a language. The first and last movement are very similar and serve to bookend the piece, and the middle four movements each explore a different approach to writing for flute, trumpet, and organ. For Joe Contrio, I will look through the piece through, piece through two different aspects, its color and its composition. This combination of instruments is quite rare, as both the trumpet and flute are soprano instruments, and the trumpet is significantly louder than the flutes. So, Anthony Plogbarber took these challenges and turned them into opportunities to explore various color combinations. The opening of the piece exemplifies how Plog plays with colors throughout the piece. It starts with a cup muted trumpet, flute, and the right hand of the organ playing a unison G, followed by a B flat. The trumpet and flute then diverge on B4, and the organ plays the composite of the other two parts. The result is a collective tone color, eerily beautiful difficult to parse who is playing which note. This theme repeatedly returns in the movement, tying it all together. When the movement becomes more energetic in the Allegro Rabache section of the first movement, the trumpet moves to a straight mute, kind of creating a brighter, livelier color. Plog avoids having the muted trumpet and flute play together until the flute is in the extreme upper register to keep them distinct and, to, and balanced. The second movement of Jocan Trio takes a different tack to explore color possibilities between the three instruments. It utilizes both piccolo trumpet and piccolo flute, with the organ punctuating the melody with staccato syncopated eighth notes. The sparse organ part is helpful to counterbalance balance the intensity of the piccolo instruments. And though the piccolo flute has no trouble being heard over the piccolo trumpet, Plog wisely keeps them largely playing at different times to avoid a piccolo sonic assault. There is one moment at the end, however, where we get both piccolo instruments playing a lyrical melody at once, while the, trump, while the organ plays pedals with a chaotic chromatic line in the right hand. The resulting swirl of upper register timbres and interweaving chromatic lines is the brilliant apex of this second movement. The third movement changes the instrumentation yet again, with the piccolo moving back to flute and the piccolo trumpet moving to flugelhorn. The flugel's warm timbre pairs really well with the flute, but it still runs the risk of engulfing it. So when they play together, Claude keeps the flute well above the flugel horn range. There is a particularly beautiful cadenza-like duet in the middle of the movement, which beautifully exemplifies his depth of orchestration and counterpoint that I think you'll enjoy. The fourth movement is a duet between straight muted trumpet and flute, no order. Depending on the mute used, the two timbres can be very similar or very different. I have chosen to go with a similar route and have chosen an aluminum on the that will hopefully match Troy's flute very well. <laughs> in this movement, Plug does not use too much registration to avoid balance issues, hoping that the mute and hocket, which I will talk about soon, will be suffice to keep the parts distinct. The fifth movement is organ alone, exploring the organ's timbre in isolation, while the sixth movement is similar to the first, except for the trumpet is unmuted for the whole time. This is the first time it happens. This presents possibly the biggest balance challenge of the piece. Oftentimes, the flute is not much higher than the trumpet, and the dynamics are actually marked the same for both instruments. Nevertheless, it is surprisingly well balanced, and I think ideally the idea here is that the flute sounds like an overtone to the trumpet as it moves in parallel fifths with the trumpet. So next I will discuss the composition of how these individual parts are actually combined. We have talked about the registration and the instrumentation Plog uses to get different colors. And the other most important technique that Plog uses is Hockett. Hockett is a compositional technique from the medieval period where musical lines are split up and distributed between two or more voices, like a rapid call and response with incomplete phrases. The result can be very choppy, but it can also create really interesting temporal effects, especially in a situation like this with contrasting colors between the instruments. I asked Plo if the pervasiveness of this technique in his music was due to an interest in medieval music, and he said, not so much. 
Any similarity between his music and medieval composers is either by subconscious absorption or purely coincidental. The first instance of Hockett we see in the Jokan Trio is in the Allegro Vivace section of the first movement, where the organ fills in the rests of the trumpet line. The same trumpet line is then expanded in the right hand of the organ with harmony added in thirds, and the left hand of the organ and flute playing canon with it. Hockett with dovetailing comes, comes up again as the first movement reaches the climax before moving to a lyrical section. The flute and organ are together, and the trumpet fills in the gaps playing minor, sending minor sevens. The second movement is where Hockett really starts to become the primary compositional technique. Compositional technique. Plogue uses it to balance out the piccolo flute and the piccolo trumpet. The left hand of the organ plays with the flute, and the right hand plays with the piccolo trumpet, dovetailing each measure. And while the third movement is largely lyrical and avoids Hockett, the fourth movement is a study in Hockett. It is incredibly rapid and technically challenging. It's reminiscent of a kacha, a medieval song depicting a chase or a hunt that uses Hockett and cannon. The flute and trumpet often, often fill in each other's lines with just one sixteenth note. Plot does this unusual technique because it is, well, first musically interesting, and it creates a new color as these, as these instruments interweave with each other. And also because it helps with the balance, since that the trumpet and flute are rarely playing at the same time. The last movement is known as well in that it does not use Hockett as the primary compositional technique. For the first time, the two instruments are homorhythmic. The, hum, the rhythmic consolidation is quite striking and it builds the intensity. It is an effective conclusion to the piece. Joe Contrio is driven by Plogue's desire to explore the different timbral possibilities of the flute, trumpet, and organ. To avoid balance issues, he frequently uses trumpet mutes, writes flute in the upper register, keeps the organ texture sparse, switches instruments to include flute horns, piccolo and piccolo trumpets, and he also writes in a way that keeps the voices from overlapping too much, primarily by using pocket and by giving each instrument a solo mode. With four themes on paintings of Edward Munch, we saw how Anthony Plogue interprets color through Munch's paintings. And with Joe Contrio, we see how Plogue explores different musical colors with the wider palette that includes the flute. We will hear the consistency of Plogue's chromatic interweaving language in both pieces, but I think you will hear a deeper maturity and sophistication in the way Joe Contrio is written. It has been a pleasure to prepare both of these pieces. Thank you to the committee for being here and Professor Chris Gecker, and thank you once again to Troy Valentonio on the flute and Mark Willie, the organ, for your hard work on these pieces. With that, here is Joe Contrio.